Hello, Aquarius. Welcome to your tarot reading. So, um, while I was shuffling out this spread, um, the words I'm hearing are star-studded, inspirational speaker, and I'm also hearing as well, uh, substantial gathering and communication that will kind of um, teach you a lot about, you know, social niceties, teach you a lot about uh, mingling, teach you teach you a lot about the need to kind of, um, uh, I, I want to say, uh, socialize, interact, play nice, and kind of um, surround yourself with people so that you can learn a lot from them, okay? So this is a very other-oriented type of a month, and I feel like for some of you, uh, you're going into the month with a lot of reservation from your end, with a lot of like... Um, I feel nervousness, nervousness about how other people perceive you, uh, nervousness about, you know, do I have what it takes, um, doubting your skills, doubting your capabilities, doubting your ability to stand in front of a group of people and making an impression or, you know, being able to persuade large groups of people to come over to your uh, side of things or to believe in the things that you believe in. So I feel like you're coming in with excitement, but also nervousness, with trepidation, but also, you know, uh, with a chance to prove yourself. So this is a month where you are going to be surrounded by a lot of people and you're going to shine. You're going to have opportunities to persuade them. You're going to be in the limelight. And so it's a very public um, space oriented type of a month and you know depending on how extroverted or introverted or how fixed or how stubborn or how um, independent you are um, I feel like it can push or pull many of you in different directions so let me first of all talk about the first thing that kind of screamed out at me when I uh, lay the cards down okay so let's talk about this the three of cups the Three of Cups deals with social niceties. It deals with mingling with other people, working well with other people, collaborating with other people, but it's a Cups energy. So this deals more with like friendships. It deals more with like um, social exchanges with other people where it doesn't have to be so, you know, uh, heavy. It can be very superficial. It can also be very light. It could just be, you know, mingling with other people. And I can tell right off the bat, I feel like some of you are great at this, okay? If you like have um, five minutes to make a really good first impression, you guys got it down. You guys make really, really good first impression. And, and um, the reason for that is that many of you have a myriad of life experiences to draw from. So when, when you meet somebody new and they mention, oh, you know, for example, I live in Texas, you can draw an experience from your past related to Texas. Or they can say, yeah, I work in the pharmaceutical company. You know, you're very uh, intelligent and you're very well read and you're very on top of current events. So you could draw an example from your past from pharmaceutical. And so whatever someone is throwing at you, you always have a way to kind of make that connection so that the other person feels validated, okay? However, the problem becomes when the superficial interaction um, lasts for too long. So, for example, if you're not able to, um, you know, get at any depth to the conversation with another person, you'd rather not pursue it. You'd rather just, you know, kind of just cast it aside. And then if you're constantly, constantly forced to socialize and mingle, and, you know, socialize and mingle in order to establish connections, in order to network, in order to do something uh, to benefit your job, you feel almost as if you're selling out. You feel almost as if this is, you know, not what I signed up for and you feel very fake, right? And so it's kind of like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you come across as you're as being very sociable. But on the other hand, I feel like you deep down, you do want those deep-rooted, honest, authentic connection. And this kind of like darting from one flower to the next, being that social butterfly, it's not really going to fly anymore this month. You would rather 
step away from all this superficiality and look for something deeper. So I do feel many of you, there's this conundrum here. This is like the, the person that's the life of the party, very vibrant, very well traveled, very worldly, has a myriad of life experiences and quite independent, okay? And the people that you're encountering, they might tend to be a little bit more cliquish. You know, they have their cliques, they have their groups, they have their, they have like a fixed set of people that they hang out with on a regular basis. So trying to get your foot in the door or trying to barge in, it just feels uh, awkward. It also feels a little bit inauthentic and so you're going to be dealing with circumstances uh social you know groupings and you're going to be dealing with this i feel for many of you in your personal life okay personal social life um how do i find this group of people that i can hang out with how do i you know become a part of this group how do i get my way in and the best strategy in life in general is not to try so hard, okay? Not to try to, no matter what they're saying, try to find every example in the book to relate to what they're saying. Life doesn't really work like that. So let things kind of organically um, play out. Otherwise, you're going to feel like this. You're going to feel out of place. You're going to feel vulnerable and exposed. And then you're going to start to feel like, are they judging me? Or do they feel I'm inauthentic? Am I trying too hard? Okay, so that's the first thing I want you to be a little bit careful about. And I feel for many of you, you've been all work, work, work. You've been really, really busy with work, with your personal life, family, and, you know, uh, relationships as well. And I feel like you're kind of coming out of your shell this month and you're trying to find that community of people that you can connect to, that you can go out with, that you can have like these more lighthearted um, interactions with. And the minute that you do that, I, I feel this automatic sense of regret. Like the minute that you step out of your, you know, your lair and you're trying to connect to other people and you're just like, wow, I don't really have anything in common with them. I don't really have, you know, um, so for example, some of you have mortgage responsibilities, family that you're taking care of. Um, and, you know, just a lot of things that are, I, I want to say that you would consider a little bit more serious. And then you might be hanging out with, you know, uh, singles people that don't have the mortgage, don't have the responsibilities. And so when you're talking, their problems and your problems are like night and day. And you feel this inability to connect and to relate. And so I'm just going to say this. I feel like you're scrambling to find people that you can have the emotional connection with. And if it's not apparent right off the bat, then I just don't feel they're the right relationship for you or the right people for you. So don't force it. When the connection happens, it's going to be natural and it should be natural. It should be instinctive it should be intuitive it should be you know felt on a very deep personal level so don't try to fit this into you know this okay so don't try to fit this whatever this is that's not working where you feel like i can't really connect with these people don't mistake that for this because it's going to come along for you. And when it's there, you're going to feel it at the very core of your being where you can feel exposed and vulnerable and you feel like, oh, they're not judging me. I feel safe. So in the process of finding, you know, that group where you can belong, that, um, that sense of belonging, that sense of, you know, the, the I, I, I want to even say that sense of fraternity or even the sorority. Some of you might be in college dealing with this and, you know, you're, you're just not feeling the people that you're around. Um, some of you are just in a work environment and you're trying to find people that you can have these solid, meaningful connections with. And it's going to come into the picture for you. You have to experience this awkwardness first in order for you to appreciate when things 
mesh well on a soul level with another person or with a group, okay? So this, I feel, has been happening for you guys since January. So I don't know um, if there has been some major, major, you know, like uh, new people in the work environment, in the school environment, in the internship environment. But things have been, feel, j things just felt a little bit out of, out of sync energetically and also communication wise and emotionally. Things have been kind of like fluctuating in your life since January. The month of April was when you're praying and you're just like, please let me find that kindred spirit that I can have that connection with. And I feel for many of you, you were praying for love. You were praying for, you know, that deep rooted relationship. You're praying for less superficiality and you're praying for something that is a little bit more meaningful, a little bit deeper. I'm also sensing for many of you praying for a big job here, praying for a job interview to go well because you don't like it when you're in kind of like a panel interview and everyone's staring at you. So you could, you know, at normal times in your life, be very, very, very confident. But when you're in a panel of people and they're sitting there shooting questions at you and you have to, you know, answer the questions one by one and it can feel very nerve wracking. And I feel like, you know, that's normal for everybody. So there's something here that indicates to me discomfort and it's going away. It's January from January to April. It is shifting away. March might have been the time where it was like, ugh, that was really uncomfortable. And then April was when the energy died down. And now we're moving into the month of May and everything is spectacular. So let me talk about a few things. Let me talk about your career and your work, okay? Um, because that is the second message coming out here. This is a card about success, and this is like very public, um, you know, the spotlight is on you. You are the, the one thing that everyone is gravitating towards, and you're the person that everyone is kind of looking at or looking up to. So this overall basically means you're going to be really, really, really happy and satisfied and just um, very lucky overall to be able to attract the people that you want and to be able to attract the types of job and the, the career accolades and the recognition that you're looking for. And a lot of it has to do with kind of like easing up, okay? So first we have a three of cups here and Aquarius, you are really notorious for um, being very like, um, you have a, you always have an idea of what you want, okay? And then I feel like some of you get stubborn to the point where you're just like, I want this. If I can't have this, I don't want anything else. I'd rather have this. If not, I'd rather be by myself. If I can't have it exactly like this, I'd rather not have it at all. So that mentality, you're easing up. This is a card about acceptance, okay? This is like being obstinate, wanting exactly what it is that you kind of envision, even though whatever is offered in front of you might even be better options, might even be more in alignment with you but no you want that specific thing and then when you can't have that specific thing you don't want it at all so obstinate energy very stubborn very fixed and not being able to verbalize even to yourself or to others or to the universe why is it that you want this and you're so fixated on it that i'm giving you all these things and you're not you're still not able to compromise so in the reverse position, I feel like this stroke of luck and all these good things are coming to you guys because you are becoming a lot more appreciative. You are becoming less fixed, less rigid, less obstinate, and you're willing to kind of open yourself up and be a little bit more flexible. I can't have exactly what I want, but these options are just as good. So I'm going to make the most of it. Okay, so I feel like you're easing up. You're becoming a little bit more flexible. You're becoming, overall, a lot more grateful for everything that you have that the universe has offered you. Everything that's offered from other people as well. You're becoming a lot more open and a lot more, um, just like, I, the, the word is mutable. 
mutable. So it looks really good. And the career success is coming in mainly because, you know, once we appreciate everything that's given to us, once we actually see what's in front of us and we start to, to kind of think about like, um, you know, life is not so bad. There are other people out there that don't have many options, but I have a lot of options. So I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to stop moping. I'm going to stop whining and I'm going to stop, start, you know, um, making the most and building upon these opportunities. It's not to say that you guys mope or whine. I don't feel like you guys are whiners, but a lot of the times too, and this is kind of like a fallacy with everybody, not just with you guys, but it's worse with the fixed signs like you, Taurus, uh, Scorpio, you and Taurus in particular. Oh my gosh. So it's sort of like you want certain things to be a certain way. And a lot of it boils down to the need to control our environment and the need to kind of like um, take out that element of surprise. And so when things don't exactly go the way that you want, it's hard for you to switch gears because you're so mentally, personally, emotionally invested in something that it's hard for you to kind of like, um, you know, stop digging in deeper and just kind of like switch gears, right? So this is the month for us to do that. This is the month for us to be flexible. And this is the month for us to, when we feel that, you know, that, um, that wave of frustration or anger come on, when we're not getting exactly what the other person said they were going to deliver, or we're not getting exactly the results that we're looking for, we want to take a deep breath. And then we want to look at the flip side. Okay, I don't have this, but on the flip side, what do I have? I'm not off for this job, but on the flip side, what else is available? Or, you know, for those who are dating, this person is not, you know, giving me 100%. But on the flip side, what else is available for me? So let's, you know, try to do that devil's advocate and just see what else is available. Keep yourself very flexible because I feel like something's on the offing that is amazing and you might be in danger of missing it if you're pining after things that have already been lost as well, okay? So overall, career-wise, I feel there is a major stroke of luck that's coming in for you. And I also feel as well, this deals heavily with uh, education. So it's like mastery of something, you know, having either higher education under your belt, having a lot of training, having a lot of um, life experience, even life experience, you know, people don't really give it as much uh, merit as it deserves, but life experience uh, means a lot, especially in, in our day and age when we are dealing uh, more with like multi multicultural work settings, having life experience and being able to relate to people from all different walks of life, it matters a great deal. Um, and if you're able to connect with somebody on such a personal, you know, in a personal way, it can make or break a business deal, for example. It can also make or break, you know, uh, how you do on an interview, right? Like if you have a panel of people and there's one person that you are able to make a really, really strong personal connection with. For example, you might have, you know, graduated from the same university. You might have lived in the same city and you make that really, really strong, solid connection with that person. That person can influence the whole panel to hire you. So personal connections go a long way. And I feel this is you guys. This is always like, you know, what I would imagine Aquarius mastery of many many things but i feel like for many of you it's difficult to see how you can combine all of your knowledge to get you where you want to go this is the the month where i feel like it's the beginning of something it's the beginning process where you are consolidating putting everything together what have i done in the past what do i know how is my work experience connected to my educational experience uh, what are my long-term goals and how am I going to be able to get there? What can I rely on in the past to get me to, you know, where I need to go? 
And so I feel like you're consolidating. You're consolidating your knowledge of the outer world. You're consolidating your knowledge of yourself. And you're trying to figure out what career path will make me happy. I also feel as well, you're trying to get yourself in a place where how can I seek freedom? How can I, you know, um, remove the, the chains and the blockages in my own life? How can I seek financial security? And working for myself as well. So I feel like a lot of self-employment, a lot of um, entrepreneurial um, uh, entrepreneurial endeavors kind of brewing in the picture for many of you Aquarius. And I feel it's almost like many of you are kind of, uh, you're looking around and you're just like, I wish I had, you know, mentors or I wish I had somebody uh, that has been through it before so that I can kind of pick their brain. So I wish I had an uncle who is like an entrepreneur. I wish I had parents that were like, you know, college graduates so that they can show me the ropes. And you're feeling a little bit envious of people that might have already, you know, gone that route, that might have the proper mentor, that might have had the, the, the guidance. But I can assure you, Aquarius, you're not one to walk in anybody's footsteps. It's helpful, but I feel like for many of you, the fun thing is in tackling a problem, unraveling it to try to find a solution on your own. So even if you had somebody you know that has already been there and you could pick their brain, the fun the, the fun part of it is for you to figure things out on your own. And I can already feel like even if they're telling you, you should do this, you should do that, you're not really going to listen. So it's kind of like, you know, in one ear, out the other. And so who cares, right? So why do we need that if we already know what we're going to do? So the only thing that's really standing in your way now is like consolidating all the knowledge, creating kind of like a strand of knowledge rather than all these, you know, disparate things weave it some way into a strand so that things are connected and things are related and once you're able to find the connectivity between different ideas different work experiences different things you're going to realize that everything is all related and that's where you're going to be able to bust yourself out of these you know restrictions that you've been feeling i feel a lot of people wanting to start a business, wanting to uh, be self-employed, feeling really, really stuck where they are because their skills are not being acknowledged. Well, this is the month where somebody is really going to acknowledge your skill and they're going to, they're not just going to, you know, tell you quietly, hey, you're really smart. You solved this problem that got us all stumped. I feel like there's going to be some type of a public acknowledgement of your mastery of your skills there's also going to be a situation where i feel like you're going to be walking on stage or you're going to be in the public eye and you're going to be sharing um, your skills your expertise with a group of people so it could be like a training seminar a um, public speaking event pub like a speaking engagement where you're getting you're getting into a public area and I feel like, you know, it's, it's always uncomfortable, right? It's always nerve-wracking. But at the end of it, you're going to feel really proud of your accomplishments. And I also feel it's going to lead the way for more opportunities, for future engagement, for, you know, other opportunities to be coming into the picture as well. And um, that's what's really going to help jumpstart your career. It's not just the main job that you're doing. It's all the other side jobs. It's all the other opportunities that you're taking to enhance your visibility in the work environment in your professional life. So it's not just about, you know, networking. Networking is all like intangible, right? Like it's all these connections that we have and, and the right knowing the right people and, you know, being seen with the right people. But no. And I feel like deep down you know this. These are very superficial. Why don't we instead go out and get things done? You know, like uh, leading a, a group of people, doing a public uh, speaking event, educating the public, 
showing people what we know and showing people how much we know, these are a little bit more concrete and tangible and measurable. So the whole time you were just like iffy about this, but you're iffy about it for the right reason because you know that there is substantially a lot more out there that can be had if you take the actions rather than relying on the connections, right? So Aquarius, um, this month is going to be very good for you. Um, I was going to do, you know, just like a career work oriented type of a reading, but I feel like there's a lot of love messages that are coming through. Okay. So let me just, oh, wow. Okay. So let me just, um, talk a little bit about this because it is coming out. Okay. So first of all, let me clear this out of the way. We have here a, a definite love connection. And I feel as if it is linked up here in the work environment. Okay. So for many of you, we have here a water sign. So this is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. This is somebody that really respects your independence, okay? They see you as someone who's inspiring. They see you as someone who's childlike, but not in a you know patronizing way. They like your creativity. They like your independence. And you kind of light up their world when they're with you. Uh, water signs tend to be a little bit more depressive. Uh, they meet other people, and then when they're around downers, they can be very depressed and, and down. When they're around people who are inspiring, they can feel very inspired and very motivated. So water signs that you're dealing with in general is like this. Someone who's a little bit on the shyer end, a little bit more methodical, slow to act, very shy, and um, uncertain. Okay, So I feel like they really like you. And they sense as well that you're like the, the breath of fresh air in their lives. So for those of you who are dating, for those who are dating, I feel like you have a water sign who felt very, very uh, stuck in their lives. You know, they, they might have been in a bad relationship for a really, 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 really long time. And uh, they might have like not dated for a really, 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 really long time. And they're trying to look for opportunities to bust out. And then when they see you, you're like this. You're like, you know, um, nonchalant. You're happy. You're optimistic. And you're independent. And you're financially very well off. You don't need them to take care of you. Um, they love this energy. And I feel like they feel very inspired by you. And so... I feel as if there's a big relationship offer for you and uh, this person is very slow. Take it very, very slowly with this person. They've been, they recently got out of something that might not have been very good, okay? And they're trying to find their bearing and they really like you. So they're going to make an offer. They're coming towards you. So... The natural inclination is, you know, I'm getting what I want, speed up, but I feel like you need to slow down. You need to make sure that, you know, that you are really sure about how you feel about this person. Um, so I feel singles. There's a love offer coming. I also feel as well, if you're dealing with um, someone, there's somebody in your work environment that likes you. Okay, so you have you might even have multiple offers. And I also feel like for Aquarius, there might have been a dry spell. There might have been a, a you know, like a situation where it's like you felt uncomfortable in your own skin, uncomfortable in your body, uh, body image issues, weight issues, and things like that. And you're like, no one is attracted to me or no one is really going to approach me. And then it happens in the month of May and you're just like, and it's not just one person. There might be multiple people as well. Multiple offers that are available for you, okay? So the other person that I was feeling as well, and I pulled out these cards, I feel like there's somebody that is a little bit like a authoritarian figure, you know, like a older, wiser, someone who's a little bit of a stick in the mud. They, they don't really, um, they're a little bit more traditional. They're a little bit more like, um, 
I feel like they're a stick in the mud, and because you're so independent, they're naturally very drawn to you, right? But they they won't show it. They won't show it. So I feel like there's this person here, um, very intelligent, really really intelligent person, and I feel like there are some communication barriers between the two of you. I also feel as if. The timing is a little weird, right? It's like they're coming towards you, and you're distracted with other things. So some of you could be in a relationship here with a water sign. So you have a water sign, a Pisces, a Cancer, a Scorpio, and you're preoccupied with this relationship. But this relationship is proving to be a little bit restrictive. And then you have another person, possibly a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. Coming towards you, or at least another person that is very passionate and excited, and things like that. But it seems like they're showing their interest multiple times, and you were either distracted or you were looking another way, and you you didn't really see all the effort that they put in. And then now it's like you know, once burned, twice shy. Now they're like, I'm not putting in the effort anymore. I'm done. So. Be appreciative of what's coming in in your life, and I wish I could also tell you guys as well. You know,、um, be a little bit more observant.、Um, I feel like you, most of you are very intuitive, but I'm also sensing that,、um, you know, when it comes to the emotions, many of you can be a little bit underdeveloped. Okay, so. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example.、Um, let me make this example like kind of、um, relevant because I I know what it's like to be an Aquarius where you're kind of like paying attention to the wrong things or something is like right in front of you but you have no idea. So let's just say, okay, you have a friend and the friend is like the、um, so. The friend, let's say you're a female and you're a heterosexual female, and you have a male friend. And every time you're like, "Hey, let's go eat lunch," the male friend is always there. And then every time you know you had a bad day, the male friend is always there to listen to your vent sesh. Like they're the the male friend's always there. And then、um, all of a sudden, you decide to move to a different city, and you tell your male friend, and the male friend was all like. I've always, you know, had feelings for you, and you're just like, oh, I had no idea. Why didn't you tell me sooner? So think about how their actions, you know, kind of like how their actions have shown you time and time again how they feel about you. And I feel like some of you forget these things. Some of you don't really give it enough credit, or some of you because you think like, oh, they're already in the friend zone. You don't really see them as possible suitors. So I see opportunities like that coming in, where you have a friendship with somebody and they like you, and、uh, you have another person that you're in a relationship with, and the relationship might feel a little bit rocky. It might feel a little bit restrictive, and the male friend or you know whoever your friend is, there there's an attraction. They they're coming towards you, but you're kind of not looking in the right direction, okay? Or you're not like aware of it. So, appreciate the people that are around you, Aquarius. Even if you don't reciprocate their feelings, at least tell them, "I'm very flattered." You know, thank you, but no, thank you. But I'm very flattered, or I really appreciate、um, you being there for me. So, telling somebody that and softening up, and you know, allowing them to feel like all their efforts were not in vain. That you appreciate their efforts. That you care about them as a person, so that you know you can validate their feelings. It, it's、uh, it, it goes a long way. So, no matter what, you have a really. I feel like the answer here is yes. Okay, so you've got like a yes card here. So if you're wondering, you know, is my career going to take off? Does that person like me? Does that person care about me? It's all yes. But I also feel there's a situation here where someone is like, I've tried. 
to show you how I feel. I've tried and you keep turning me down or you never took it seriously or, you know, you just uh, blocked me. And they're trying to reach out to you and they're just like, okay, I'm done. They, you keep overlooking it or you don't acknowledge it and they're like, I'm done. So they're a little bit, I'm sorry, they're a little bit um, kind of steeled up. Okay, so... Uh, if you're dealing with a fire sign that is like that, I feel like it's the end of a line. It is, it's the end of the line here for, for that situation if it's a fire sign. But you have somebody that you really like here, super intelligent, very, very intelligent, uh, a great speaker, a great orator, a great teacher. And you should definitely nurture that, that relationship. But I feel as if there's a lot at stake here. With the Ten of Swords, it's kind of like a situation can go both ways, okay? It's somebody that could be in your professional life. It's also somebody that you find very invigorating, very in sync with, and very um, inspiring to be around, if that's the case. And, you know, um, you might want to be careful about um, making it from a professional relationship into a love relationship. So you want to be careful about the transition here, okay? So I hope the reading has been helpful for you guys. Um, I do wish you all the best, okay? And um, if I have time, I'll come back for the mid-month reading, but I'm not sure yet. I won't know until the middle of the month, okay? Take care of yourself, Aquarius, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.